hurling words of consciousness. And welcome back to Jeff Koinange, live at the Intercontinental Hotel. What a lineup we have for you tonight, incredible. In fact, I'm gonna stop talking right now because I feel like the dumbest kid in the room with all these professors here, seated here before me, right next to me. As I earlier told you, Professor Gugawa Dionga, joined by his son, who is a professor of English at Cornell University. And those of you who know where Cornell is, or what Cornell is, we're talking Ivy League, top-notch university in the US. He's written a bunch of books, about half a dozen. He started off, many of you know Nairobi Heat. There's a big one, huge hit. Nairobi Heat, if you don't, if you haven't read it, pick it up. Followed up with Black Star Nairobi. Amazing stuff. Of course, he wrote a series of poems, hurling words at consciousness. And his latest book, which just published this month, is called Mrs. Shaw Mukoma Wa Gobe. Good to see you, sir. Uh, same here. Good nice one, man. Well. Nice one. Prof? Yeah. Uh, prof? What happened, man? Prof? Professor, professor, professor. You know, he's totally amazing. All right, miss. The reason I'm not shaking his hand. Did I, sh <laughs> did I shake your hand? Yes, you did. Yeah, oh, yeah. it was a mistake. I think it was instinctive. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> was, what happened was, I was coming, you know, I was on a book tour before I came here. Mm -hmm. I went to, I went to Germany. Mm. Uh, that was my first stop before I went to uh, Turino, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Rome, and France, and then came here. But it's what happened in Germany that I want to talk about mm. and explain why I didn't really want to shake his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Because I go there, I think I'm very well known. Yes. Right? Yeah. So I go to a bookshop, and they don't seem to know who I am. Somebody said, no, no, this is, this is uh, uh, Mokoma's father. <laughs> oh, this is, oh, <laughs> how are you? Right? Mokoma's uh, father. Mokoma's father, right? Yeah, but it's only, because, I've only taken because, one country, though, so far. Because, no, actually, because his... Nairobi Heat. Nairobi Heat, yeah. Actually, in German translation, has been on the bestseller list in Germany. So at every bookshop you go, if you mention Mokoma's name, or Mokoma and Goge's name, mm -hmm. you mention Mokoma without Goge, yeah. there may be. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Mokoma. He, so, he has been asking uh, me to give up Mokoma. Really, he, he <laughs> really, really, you know, uh, my You'll get very good treatment. Okay, yeah. so let me ask yeah. you, Mukoma, when did you start writing? I mean, well, I started writing from a very early age. You know, I started writing when I was about nine years old. I remember my first poem was about two boxes. I guess I was a little bit violent, uh, <laughs> but um, but I never really considered myself a writer until around 1996 when I was in Ohio, and um, in Ohio I was invited to be part of a of a of a, of a poetry festival. And when I got there, there was a big banner that said, Mukama Wago, a poet, main stage. So then after that, I was like, yep, that's what I am. I'm a poet. <laughs> <laughs> so I was named, I guess you could you say that. Named right there. I, was, I was named yeah. a writer. Okay, yeah. growing up mm. in Ohio, uh, even in high school, did they know mm. you were Gogi's son? Well, I, I did all my, my school, in my early school in here. So I, I, I went to Tigoni Primary School, then to Genia High School, then to Kanunga. Uh, so, so everybody knew. And, you know, and, and in Limuru, you know, I would, yeah. I would, you know, I would go find people reading newspapers. Um, you know, with my dad on the front page, and they would say, "Oh, how is he doing?" You know, <laughs> but uh, but yesterday I was thinking about how how okay. Now I teach him at Cornell. You know, I, I love teaching a grain of wheat at Cornell. But at Genia High School, we did a, a river, the river between. So I've been thinking about the differences between be, you know being taught about his work and now teaching it. And there is no difference because in both instances I'm expected to know you know inner details by being his son. So, yeah, <laughs> so people would ask me, yeah. okay, for example, that question about Mudoni, that would have come to me like, why why did he kill Mudoni in the river yeah. between? Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. What, what do you yeah. think of this young man? I mean, goodness. Well, he is a rival, but, uh, <laughs> but a friendly rival. Okay, you know. Sometimes. You know, and quite frankly, he's teaching your no, work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, he's. I, I feel really, as a father. I really, really feel blessed, you know. By the way, I've got nine children, not ten. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Nine, nine but, ten, no, no, plus, nine. minus. Uh, yeah. nine, nine. <laughs> <laughs> nine children, by the way. Yeah. Right. And you're talking about and, that, that little baby of yours. Yeah. And, oh, yes. Mukami. Uh, no, uh, Mombi. Mobi, Mobi. Yeah. She just arrived from presenting a paper at a conference in Germany. So she just flown in right now. 
from a conference where she was presenting a paper. And this at is a major. Her, she just finished her undergrad, mm -hmm. you know, so she's already presented at major yeah. conferences. How? Yeah. That's and why sometimes I ask her that. I'm like, yeah. okay, how did you and because she, I like to do it? I hope she doesn't mind saying so. <laughs> yes. We're yeah. so proud of her, really, yes. because on. she got three degrees in four years. She's a triple major, in other words. He's a double major. Yeah. You're a double she, major. Yeah. She went a step further and did triple major. And is the first triple major in her college, or rather, in her Harriet Wilkins College, Honors College, which is part of the Florida Atlantic University. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're also very proud of her. Three really. degrees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, three for, for her, two for me. <laughs> what, what do you? But on the other hand, I have a doctorate, though. <laughs> <laughs> And, but you don't and, say. And, 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 and I'm not much older. <laughs> <laughs> what was your double degree? Um, I did political science and English. You know, when I got there, I thought I would do political science. And um, then I started taking literature classes, and English eventually took over because in my, in my PhD work was actually just English. I, somewhere I dropped political science. So maybe she'll get like a triple doctorate. In <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, yes. God. <laughs> what, what is the problem? Is it the water in Kamerezo, in Limuru? What, what is it? Well, this is not fair, huh? I, I'll, I'll tell you what. When I was growing up in the Muru, we had Maguo marshes. All sorts of birds used to be there. So we children, uh, we didn't have many clothes, but we always took off the calico sheet we had and swam in the Maguo waters. Very wonderful waters, actually. Now, came an international a, a butter shoe company and through the with the blessings or cursing of the colonial state they made magoo marshes really where they uh, they poured all the dirt for mm -hmm. the tannery mm -hmm. the so influence. all the birds went away yeah. naturally the environment of the area was really ruined you know but fortunately you know being a little bit facetious but fortunately I had absorbed <laughs> enough mango <laughs> water, fresh one, not uh, and friendly, and passed it on. And passed it on. Yeah, I, I thought you were going to say we had been fertilized by the birds. <laughs> <and all. laughs> you know? Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. When people come yeah. to you, uh, Mokoma, and say, you know, uh, your dad, your yeah. dad, I mean, he's written more than three dozen books. Yeah. Is that, is that a lot of pressure on you? I mean, it must have been. Mm. I mean, before you started writing, it must yeah. have been a lot of pressure on a young man, you know, to fill these mm. big shoes. Well, I mean, no, not really, because the beauty of writing. Okay, first, I'm also very proud of him, you know, and, um, you know, not just his, uh, his writing and his, um, his love for language and uh, his, uh, his use of beauty and aesthetics and so on and so forth, but also his political stance. You know, so, so already I'm proud of his work. Um, you know, and him as, as, a, as, as a human being and as a father. <laughs> but, um, you know, but, um, but when it comes to writing, though, it's just you and the thing you're writing, you know. So w once, you, once you sit down and you start writing, as you said earlier, especially once the story takes off and it enters its own logic, then that's the only job you have to do is to follow that story. Mm -hmm. Now, you eventually end up with the questions of uh, how the book will be received. You know, and that one you have no control over, right? Yeah. You know, but as far as the writing process mm -hmm. goes, it's really just you and what you are writing. Yeah. Quickly, but, but, but I should add that. Um, yeah. That we are, we are also when we, we also talk about writing a lot. I like to joke and say that mm -hmm. in America, you know, kids and fathers, you know, they go out and play baseball. Yeah. You know, or fishing or whatever, right? You know, and for us as a family, especially with the mother siblings as well, who are also writers, um, uh, uh, we born through words. We play through words. Our baseball is a, uh, our football is, is our, our, our words. So yeah. what do you do? Do, yeah. do you like read poetry to each other at home? Do you uh, during dinner? <laughs> <laughs> I think they create fiction. But I, I should have explained that mm. four, F, four, three, mm. four other Siblings kids are writers. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. And they have published works. Yeah, they and are, they're they published, published works. works yeah. 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 So yeah. earlier, to, earlier today we did a launch in. Yeah, in fact we did a launch. Alliance. Yeah, Alliance. Yeah, yeah. I don't know they, were they all? Were they all uh, part of it? Yeah. I saw what Jiko was doing. Jiko. She's done what? Yeah. Uh, the fall of saints. The fall of saints, for instance. She, Wajiko, and him are very into there. Actually, Wajiko follows. There's a different one year between Wajiko and Mokoma, right? So there's a kind of sibling rivalry that goes nice, eh? nice. so mokoma was the one that was published first and i think i know that published uh, first <laughs> yeah but wajiko said oh no yeah. and she came up with this winner 
the fall of saints. saints. Mm. But I've got others. I don't know why their books are not here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Dosho Wangugi, mm -hmm. uh, City Murders, have just been published by, we have the same publisher, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, T. Gugi, whose collection of short stories, you know, of love and despair, has also been released. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that particular one received one of the best reviews I've seen of any work mm -hmm. in one of the papers, yeah. Was it the Nation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I think it was yeah. by Joyce Nero, who just yeah. launched her yeah. own book. Yeah, right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. She reviewed yeah. my, 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 one, my one book, yeah. one, one. Uh -huh. I've yeah. written one. Right. Not 40. But that's the beginning of many, of course. <laughs> I, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. I didn't dive yeah. in those waters <laughs> in, uh, in, in Limuru. In Limuru. In Limuru. I was in Kiapa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, oh. <laughs> My director is asking this question. I've got to ask you. Mm. Do you edit your kids' works? Do they come to you and say, hey, Dad, will you mm. look at my stuff? No, but they do ask me to look at their work. When they are, when they are working, when they are really working, because with novel writing and so on, it's, your, it's you and your characters. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that they, no matter how much you may love them, you know, mm -hmm. can do about their rest with the characters. But once they finish, you know, mm -hmm. they can, they send me some of the manuscripts, I do look at them, I comment, I make my own reactions, and they can take what they want from those reactions, you know. Gotcha, okay. But they also, by the way, also send the same manuscript to each other. Ah, so they yeah. have to comment it's on like each other's work. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. You don't right. need to go outside. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Nice. Mrs. Shaw, real quick, what's it about? Well, it's, it's, it's set in the 1990s Kenya during the Moy dictatorship. So, and it features a, a, a political activist who gets exiled. Uh, exiled into the U.S. So it's very different from the other stuff I've written. And then he goes into the U.S. Um, and then he's, he's very self-destructive. But at any rate, he, he comes back, to, you know, he comes back to Kenya with the hope, you know, the idea of the second independence. This time the third independence. He comes back for the third independence only to get betrayed. And eventually, maybe I shouldn't say what happens to him. Yeah. yeah. Were you talking about your dad in this? Well, I, I, I do believe, I mean, there's a bit of biography in everything yeah. you write. Yeah. So, so the idea of exile, things I've read, some of it is also from my own experiences of the, uh, of, of the alienation of being in the United States. But definitely there's a bit of biography in, in, in everything we right. write. Right. Yeah. Prof, a lot of criticism out there about why you abandoned the English language and ah. insisted on <laughs> writing a kikuyu. Kikuyu, as you say it. Yes. I mean, I mean, this is actually... You know, wherever I go, I'm asked that particular question, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a very important question yeah. for people to ask, you know. And I answer this way. Whenever one people have conquered another, the first thing they do, the first thing they do is impose their language on the conquered peoples, okay? Yep. Because if you can capture People's, you can destroy people's language, which was the base of their memory, and impose another language on them. They are now thinking within the memory of the new language. Right. My, I say this to everybody. If you, and I say to your audience here, if you know all the languages of the world and you don't know your mother tongue or the language of your culture that is enslavement but if you know your mother tongue or the language of your culture and you add to it all the languages of the world that is empowerment mm. right yeah so you you got your own base in your own language, in your own culture, in your own history. And for that base, the sky is the limit. But what now they tell us through education system that we can only be ourselves only within the linguistic universe of Europe. And I say all languages have our repositories of beauty and intelligence, okay? So you encourage it? I want not to encourage, I say African survival depends 
on our recovery, you know, on our relations to our languages. Because of this, our languages are our starting point. And the whole point of colonialism is to make one starting point a problem to oneself. Mm. They say they want your skin color to be a problem to yourself. You know, they want your hair to be a problem to yourself. They want your language to be a problem and to yourself. You've seen even in America now, you've seen black people now even wear dead people's hair. If they are Western, dead yes. people's hair, yeah. they, they wear them. Yes. Right? Yeah, it sells. Right. <laughs> my skin, I don't let anybody make my skin a problem to myself. I don't make anybody make my own language a problem to myself. No, it is my language, is my starting. In the same way as English language is a starting point of English people, mm. Chinese is a starting point of Chinese people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, and I don't want to tell I mean, my your starting point is some, somehow more of a starting point than mine. Okay, so what you say, yeah. you have no apologies. Uh, no apology, not None. even apology, I'm saying aggressively. Yeah. We have to recover. Mm our base in our languages yeah. but this has a wider symbolism okay hold that thought yeah. because you've criticized me twice tonight um, mm -hmm. my name and now my hair mm -hmm. ah. <laughs> oh <laughs> But must, it, okay, it looks must, good. Let, let must, look, we must do something yes, about it. Maybe, maybe, maybe I should get Mukoma. Mukoma looks uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool. Right. <laughs> so anyway, let's take a break, come back. Right. Talk about Michelle Mugo. She's in town. She told me to say hello to you. Are you oh, going to see her? Great. Are you going yes. to see her? I'll try and see her. I hope so. She's an amazing lady. Wonderful. Amazing. Wonderful. Yeah, she was yeah. great last night. Yeah. Mukoma, and you too, man. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, geez, you are the future of this country. You know that. You're well, the future. Uh, I'm not very modest. I say yes. <laughs> 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 but you don't say. <laughs> yes. Hickory, keep tweeting. I promise I will read your tweets when we come back. At Koinanga Jeff, at Mukoma Gogi, the hashtag. Celebrating a legend. How about that? Use that hashtag. Let's keep walk, talking about these amazing folk. Two generations of Gogis. It's a family affair, like I was saying earlier. A week, literally, of literary giants. Wow. Oh my. Oh my. JKL takes a break. We'll be back in a moment.